we just finished experimenting a little bit with the one hot encoder uh, class. And what that does for us is transform a categorical variable into a numerical representation that, uh, that, that involves using a number of bits, all of which are zero, uh, except for one, one. And the location of that one, of course, depends on the value of the categorical variable that we are trying to encode. Now what I'd like to do is give you an example of taking uh, a categorical variable and uh, computing that, that one hot encoded matrix and then inserting that data back into a data frame. So we're augmenting an existing data frame. So for this particular example, it's, going to, it's a little bit contrived, but, but what we're going to do is pull out the height uh, of uh, the left wrist and we're going to convert that into a discrete label. So the wrist is going to be considered either very high or mid-range or, or low. And uh, so, so we'll, we'll end up with a, uh, a, a categorical value at each time step uh, in the column. And, uh, and then we're going to translate that uh, categorical, categorical value into a one-hot encoding and then put it back into the data frame. So first off, let's bring, let's pull out our, our Z's. Let's just do Z here from our original infant data. And we're gonna pull out left wrist Z in this case, and we'll pull out the values. Then we're going to compute a set of labels. And I'm going to give you another example of using list comprehension for labels. So the value is going to be high if Z is greater than 0.1, else mid if Z is greater than negative 0.1, else low. And we'll stare at this here in a second uh, for oh, Z in Zs. Okay, so let me actually repair this. So, so I'm going to assign this variable ZS to be the NumPy array that is the values of all the left wrist Zs. Our list, in list comprehension, we're going to uh, iterate over all of those Zs and each step we're going to assign the value to this variable Z here and now uh, what's happening here is that uh, uh, what, what this says is the value will be high if Z, the corresponding Z is greater than 0.1, otherwise it's mid if, if it's greater than negative 0.1, otherwise the value is going to be low. And so that's going to give us a Python list and we actually want this to be in a uh, format that is uh, NumPy array. So let's go ahead and do that conversion as well. P dot array. And we're going to reshape so it's two dimensional. Labels equals. Let's execute that. And now we can look at the labels. And let's just look at the first 20 of those labels. And you'll notice now that the values are, uh, we see a couple of mids, a low, a bunch of mids, and a low here at the end. And if we actually looked at the, the entire set of 15,000 samples, eventually you'd start to see more lows and as well as some highs in there too. So let's go ahead and build our encoder. And uh, our mat is going to be our encoder uh, two fit transform. And we're, we're going to uh, transform those labels. And let's go ahead and quick look at mat. And again, it give, it's giving us a sparse matrix of 15,000 rows and three columns. And those three columns correspond to the three possible strings that we have here, mid, low, and high. We can also look at the dense representation here. 
and and there we go. So there are our, our low, uh, sorry, our mids. There's a low here and, and some more uh, mids uh, down uh, at the very bottom of this matrix. Okay, next up, we have a, a dense matrix here. Let's create a data frame from that. So, so this is the constructor for the data frame and you can provide a set of values in the form of a NumPy matrix. And let's now look at what is inside of new data. So you'll notice it has three columns. We, we didn't actually specify column names, so they ended up being assigned uh, default va values of 0, 1, 2, et cetera. Uh, but one could actually apply uh, column names if you'd like. All right, the last step, we'd like what we'd like to be able to do is take our original data set that had left wrist and right wrist X, Y, Z plus time, we'd like to go ahead and add these two data frames together. We've structured things such that they have the same number of rows and the column headers are different from one another. So doing a concatenation is not going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and create a new infant data data frame and the operative uh, function is called concat within the pandas uh, within the pandas uh, uh, package and what you do is you provide a list of the uh, tables that you want to append together so we're going to append together infant data as well as our new data uh, data frames finally we have to also specify that we're appending these column wise uh, to, together. Uh, we don't want, we're not trying to uh, make the columns longer. We, we want to set them side by side. So, so axis equals one is, is the, the correct thing to do here. Now, let's look at the top of this. Oops, it helps if I spell infant correctly. And you'll notice now uh, infant data nine has all of our properties that we uh, have been used to left and right wrist X, Y, Z plus time. But now we also have uh, columns that correspond to this one hot encoding of, of the label that we created. Now, as, as I said, this is very much of a contrived uh, example. Uh, but there are lots of scenarios where you have a data frame that comes in and uh, it contains a mix of categorical data and numerical data. And uh, one of the first things we're going to do before we present the data to many of our machine learning algorithms is, is, is to do a transformation that takes us into a NumPy matrix that contains only numerical data. So, so one would go through a, a very similar process here. After doing this concatenation, of course, uh, we end up selecting out just the columns that correspond to the numerical data. And then from there, we can convert to a NumPy array. I won't do that, uh, that step here, uh, but that's the, the summary of uh, what you would need to do. So we're all set now for our uh, demonstrations of working with pandas and NumPy. And uh, now it's time to start playing with some machine learning methods. So that's next up in the next module.